Well, hello, friends. Thank you for joining me on this Friday edition of the Daily Connection. You know, we started the week off in the Word of God, and thankfully, we're ending the week in the Word of God. That makes for a great week of communing with God through His Word and in personal worship, prayer, meditation, and journaling. So we're going to wind up the week in chapter chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians. I want to look specifically at verse 14, but we're going to go ahead and read the, the verses that flow out of that just so we can have a good idea of the context. So pick it with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 14. Do not be yoked together with those who do not believe. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? What agreement does Christ have with Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God said. I will dwell and walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch any unclean thing, and I will welcome you. And I will be a father to you, and you will be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. All right, so here we have a verse that's probably been quoted in many cases in relation to a, a man and a woman pursu- you know, possibly pursuing the covenant of marriage. Perhaps the husband, the man, the husband-to-be is an unbeliever, the wife-to-be is a believer. And in that case, if uh, a counselor is rooted in biblical principles, they would, if, you know, if seeking to present truth, would at some point you know, give this admonition, hey, you need to be careful here. There's a warning in Scripture to not be unequally yoked. And the idea is that you have an unbeliever being somehow connected with a, a believer or vice versa. You know, I've even myself given out that admonition on a few occasions in seasons where I've counseled with individuals that have come to me seeking my guidance toward marriage. And and I've said, hey, the Bible gives a clear admonition against a believer being united to an unbeliever, especially in a bond as as intimate as marriage. Uh, I'll say to this point, it has rarely, if ever, been adhered to, received. Uh, In some cases, it's not turned out well. But here's the thing. This verse is not just talking about marriage. It says right here, do not be yoked together with those who do not believe. For what partnership? That word partnership. It's, used, it's, it's not the word koinonia, but the word translated partnership is used synonymously throughout the, Old, the New Testament to talk about the idea of fellowship. And so we're not just talking about a partnership in terms of the intimacy of marriage. We're talking about a partnership where there's got to be a commitment made. That an unbeliever, and, and obviously he's talking about an unbeliever and a believer, um, when they come together, maybe it's in a business partnership where there's a commitment being made of certain things that each one will do in an effort to make money and provide a service. Uh, maybe it's some sort of a recreational partnership where you're coming together, uh, believers coming together with a group of unbelievers to carry out some sort of a sport or an activity. It's the same idea because that believer has certain commitments, uh, certain passions, certain principles that in some cases the unbeliever, they, theirs will line up, but in many cases they won't. And here's the thing, friends. When there's a conflict between the principles and the convictions of the believer and the unbeliever, sadly in some cases the unbeliever wins out, especially if it's a situation where it's like a team sport, for instance, and that believer is a part of a group of unbelievers and and the unbelievers begin to operate in a way that's not consistent with the principles and, and the convictions of a, a biblical worldview. And that believer is quickly brought into that and even lured over into where they become that becomes their pattern. That just can't be. After all, Paul says, what partnership does Christ have with Bilal? And so the whole idea here is this. We should never make a commitment or put ourselves into a partnership, as it says here, a relational commitment where our convictions might be called into question, or even worse, we might be lured away from those principles that should guide us as a believer, and instead be lured into the convictions, the principles, the the characteristics of an unbeliever. And because after all, he says, just like God spoke in regards to you know him in the Exodus event, I will dwell among my people. I'm drawing them out from Egypt. I'm I'm separating them out from other people groups of the the areas we'll go through. We are to be separated out. And we will be separated out if we're abiding by biblical principles and we're living out the the character and and the competencies of Christ. Being a disciple, in other words. And so we need to take this to heart, not just in the context of, of the covenant of marriage, 
but also in any any type of a commitment or any type of a partnership, an agreement, a relational connection in which we might be forced or if, I guess our our convictions might come into conflict with our principles might be violated in regard in, in an effort to maintain that relationship. That's just we've got to be very careful of that. In fact, we Paul says we must not do not is an emphatic. Do not be yoked together with those who do not believe. So let's take that to heart. So if you're one who's right now in the process of seeking relational compatibility, let's say you're a young, you're, you're a Christian young lady, and you're seeking out the man that God would have to be your husband. That's got his 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 faith, his his religious convictions, his his biblical his worldview must be a biblical worldview. He must be born again in order to be equal to and, and to be a good match toward you know a, a, a partner. And the same is true for the man. If you're in the, you're a young man and you're living out your faith and you're born again and you're seeking a, a young lady that you can be united to in marriage, the two of you can begin to multiply that godly legacy through children and, and growing a family, then that means you go looking for a godly young lady. You look where godly young ladies will be. You know the principles are true there. Or maybe you're you know going entering into a, a work partnership. You know an agreement between yourself and another. You know that needs to be believers. That way you operate by the same principles and and, and same uh, you know convictions, core convictions in that. And on 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 we go. With that and, you know same is true in in certain you know sports related activities. You know you want to be linked to believers in that activity so that the the biblical principles guide you and the and the core convictions are the same. Well, that's a pretty challenging text, but it's one that's very practical in its application, and we need to look at it as such. Not overthink it, but yet not dismiss it as well. Apply it correctly and consistently. Well, friends, we've come to the end of the week, but we're also anticipating the start of a new week, and we know the week starts on Sunday. Saturday is the Sabbath. Saturday is the day that God rested in Scripture. That's the day He ordered man to rest. So Saturday is to be a day of rest. Sunday is to be our day of celebration. Sunday is to be our day of lifting Christ up and glorifying Him. And so I pray that you will make that commitment now. You'll prioritize being physically gathered for worship. And then make that commitment double when you go into small group. Both of those are essential to being an active part of the body of Christ. They're not all that's involved, but they're certainly crucial in regards to what it means to be actively a part of the body of Christ. So I'm praying you'll make that commitment now. And until we're together again, my friends, live sent.